Martin and I were just having a quick chat. Um, and I realized that this guy's energy and experience is beyond probably anybody I've ever been interviewed, other than maybe um, some of the other uh, key players like John Burley and Brad Sugars that I that I know personally. So thanks again, Martin, for taking the time to chat with us on Business Spotlight. Um, and I uh, hope you hope you're having a good day so far. How's it going? Thanks, Bill. Well, this morning, Mark up alive, and it was a great start. So I think that's just <laughs> the most important. Hearing else after that, mate, it doesn't matter because that's a good start. And I'm thankful for that. But I uh, appreciate you inviting me on having a chat today. Uh, no yeah. doubt there's only a limited, we've got a limited amount of time frame, so I'll try to keep everything as, as simple to a point form. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of questions you may have for me that would take maybe a day or two in a se seminar or a training content, which you understand, because that's your bag. Um, yeah. But I'll yeah. try to keep it brief. But appreciate it. It's nice to uh, you know meet another friendly face, uh, and particularly from you know uh, the Brad Sugars, you know environment of uh, his expertise. Uh, good bloke, and uh, going back from many years ago in the early eighties, seeing Brad focus and and uh, you know he, he's he's an entrepreneurial success. So he's got a, a fish rots at the top. You know, the bloke up the top leading, then anything else on the bottom's not going to work either. You know, so. Yeah. Get there are right. good starts there. So no doubt that uh, um, you, within what you do, if it's part of that, then uh, congratulations. That's the first thing I can say. Thank you much. Well, let's uh, let's focus on your your journey a little bit. You gave me um, we we've been talking, and I know a little bit about your the longer version of the history. But if you're if you're um, if you're sort of discussing in a short version of the of your business journey. Uh, let's let's do that. Let's get that shorter version in from the beginning to all the way up to now. And I really want to make sure that we get to um, your, you know, your Sea Sky discussion as well. Let's make sure we fit that in. So, where would you like to begin? Um, well, I'll just probably put through a, a simple bullet point because my, uh, excuse me, but my my uh, full story is on a on a book called Fifty Unsung Business Heroes. Uh, it's about Bubble and Amazon. I'm not trying to say this, but no, no, please, it, yeah, it, it has a story. And of course, I've also got on. If you Google me, I'm on YouTube, and they've interviewed me about my story, and it goes in a lot more detail. In a snapshot, dad, five kids, mechanic, born in Townsville, moved to Ipswich, coal miners town, no money. Uh, we grew up in a house mission, and uh, at 12, I sort of got a bit of rebellious hit on that. I've always wanted to be an adventurous. I was a kid that read adventure books and. So I did a runner, spent four years on the streets. Uh, that was an interesting experience. I learned, learned some the fact that you've got to go and get yourself a meal because no one's going to feed you, um, which I think today a lot of people forget their entitlement mentality. you got to do something to get something. And uh, about 16, I, I joined a gang called the Rats. Uh, they were a bunch of uh, light-hearted guys, 20 stone with uh, shotguns in their boots and uh, names like pig and animal. But uh, interesting time there. And uh, but I learned there that loyalty amongst uh, you know a, a team of thieves was much better than probably uh, what I've learned in the corporate world. But uh, I couldn't really read or write at them education. I said, you know, there you go. Um, but uh, pity for me if you call it that, or I call it the Lord's will on, on my life. He, he got me involved and got me out of that uh, through some circumstances, and I ended up getting through the door uh, through a referral of Dad. Uh, to get into washing developments. They were a big land developer at that time, selling land. I learned a bit and uh, met some folks. And then through another contact who found me there, got me into cadetship with a company called Legal General Life Australia. Uh, you know, they're an enormous big insurance company, 150 mm -hmm. years old, looking for cadets. And uh, it, it was just a chance for me, a pathway to, you know, to, to, be, to get something founding that, that probably I should never got through the door. It was just by miracle. Uh, sure of that. By the time I was 30, we'd, uh, you know, I, I had achieved top 30 sales in the world on numerous occasions, art, high rate, you know, all the awards and things, and uh, built the third largest financial planning practice uh, that was available at the time. And we're more of a probably an insurance practice with some financial planning, because back in the 80s, it was more insurance and, uh, you know, financial planning and banking didn't really start coming in the early 90s. Retired from that at 30. Um, and for a couple of years, I had a sabbatical, did some public speaking, uh, you know, the Anthony Robbins and, and different folks, and because uh, I had a story to say. So I didn't, I really wasn't a great public speaker, but I had a story about this kid that had a review. You know, mm, yeah, that somehow, true. you know, made it. Good so story. I, I didn't really need to be a great public speaker with it. I just had to say things about sharing what my journey was. 
-hmm. And I found that uh, I realized it wasn't really for me. I, I, I like building things, growing things. Um, so I met another mate, and, and in that next five, six years, we built a $200 million business. Uh, and the list of the most successful under $100 million uh, cap flow in the stock exchange history, a company called Telco Stro, telecommunication business. We stayed there and we developed into other interests. We, we got into training and other various things from that listing. And I retired then out of, I think, oh, probably about 40, 42. I retired again, um, mm -hmm. second time. And I, I really just was tired. I, I just, mm -hmm. I, I didn't really have a need for anything. I was just tired. Um, so I thought, I'll just go and put all my energy into someone else. And uh, I joined some foundations, started a couple, mostly about underprivileged kids. I really enjoyed that. There was no KPIs. There was no, you know, uh, mm. you know, financials. It was just you could be impact. busy. But you, you, it's an impact serving situation without a result. Understood. That. And uh, I got dragged into the prop industry with chairing another a larger company. I won't mention them because there's still some litigation happening in, in the legal stuff. But uh, it was about real estate sales. It was taking off again. Apartment units, Brisbane, etc. Uh, we grew that fairly substantially from uh, a team of four guys into over 100 real estate agents. Um, and they had different divisions, property developments, et cetera. And the two co-founders, which I supported, I sank a lot of money to that. And the, and the, and the GFC happened. And uh, it, just, it just all crashed. Uh, I was in Rome at the time when I got the phone call, so I had to come back. So that sort of got, I sort of got my, my tail kicked a bit there because so I never really had a loss. You know, mm. it, it, it was the first real... Gee whiz, you actually lose the business. I, I didn't realize that. Um, but I, I, I just uh, rested for about a year and got my head around it and got involved in another large company with education and functional services mixed together. Co-founded that with two other ladies and uh, we built that to 180 million in turnover sales and substantially, you know, 500 full-time employees, about a thousand contractors around Australia did really well. And it was a, it was a, an octopus style business where we centrally managed things in, inside and had different departments working together within the one direction. Got right out of that uh, about 50 52, um, and then had a couple of years off again down at Century Cove, Hope Island area. There was only so many balls you could hit on a golf course and then lunches you could <laughs> do it again. So I thought, okay, I've got another, I've got another run in me. What do I do? So I had a week off, went up to a hut. Sat down and thought, what if I haven't done what I'd like to do? What's the craziest thing? And I thought, oh, I'd like to build a bank. Because mm -hmm. when you're a poor little kid, you always used to dream that you have your own bank, you get your own money, right? Well, that's, that never lost that seed out of me. So, well, okay, I'll, I'll start a brand. And I did. MJ and Co., that's what I call it, just my name. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, I knew I had to start a consultancy side of it to bring in the traction of people that I wanted to recruit into my team. So I could buy them out, be part of that, build some of that revenue, and then, and then get that banking license and move forward. Right. Uh, and since so out of that's come C Sky, as I've been building C Sky on the side, and MJ and Co. In terms of the central department to make this octopus work. Uh, so C Sky is now only at this month became a public company mm. uh, with a proper board. We've restructured the whole thing. Uh, we've got offices in Dubai, Israel. Uh, I've got directors as I speak right now in in, Sol in Solomon Islands, Papua New Guinea doing some development stuff there. So it's a global group. We've got about 27 what I call uh, executive directors running their small independent companies. Some are bigger than the others, but between the lot, we can we've we've got a, we've got a one sort of purpose mission, and they're all equity holders in in, in this global company, and we are equity holders in their businesses. Um, we don't invite anybody to become part of the team to get in the door. You've got to come through a referral. You've got to go through a process. And we will we will basically take anywhere between 10 and 30% of your business. Mm -hmm. uh, we appoint an advisory board from our expertise team to help your business grow. And basically, from there, most of those businesses that have come in, and still we've got about three I'm talking at the moment, uh, it's like these guys got a piece of steak. They've got a great idea. They've got a business. They might be doing the same mean turnover. They've been at it for seven years. Sure. It's not slightly. I'll take that piece of steak, chop it up in a thousand pieces, and build a cow out of it. Right. Understood. Okay. So that's, now, not all CEOs like to see their business cut up and chopped up in a thousand pieces. Mm. Uh, and, and, and that's the challenge. So Yeah, they're too emotionally involved. They, don't, they might not look at it dispassionately. Yeah. 
I've got. I mean, the first thing that I do is I work with the CEO for three months and find out where his head is, mm -hmm. his emotional IQ, his capacity to make decisions, his capacity to dream, his capacity to be able to, you know, get on it really quick. If, if he's just there for, because I've got my little business and I want to grow it yeah. from, you know, five employees to thirty. Well, just go and do that because that's what I'm, we're not about. We're 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 a fast growing business, you know. Good. How do you build a how do you build a two hundred and fifty million dollar business? You go and build ten twenty five million dollar businesses. Yeah, put them together. And then consolidate the lot as a revenue process yep. and, and make the cake big enough that everyone gets a bigger piece they could do on their own. As I, for me, I'd rather own 10% of a $100 million corporation than 100% of a $5 million corporation. Yeah, bingo. Me too. Yeah. I, I don't have emotion over it. I don't have this my business thing. Mm. Um, it, business is just a vehicle. You know, mm. it's there to serve the community. It's there to provide an opportunity for people in that vehicle to get a nice journey while they're in. Mm -hmm. uh, but this ownership thing, if it's my business, I, I, I got taught a long time ago by mentors in America and when I was mid-25, I was 25. Mm -hmm. So you can keep your emotion out of business. Have some fun, make some profit, but make sure your life in itself is more important than the business. Yeah. It sounds as if that those were key lessons. How, what a business is it at its core and what your role is and how your emotions are tied to that. As if those are huge lessons. Um, yeah. that are not always known to people who haven't been around the block. So I like to hear that. Um, what other sort of lessons or business uh, learnings have, would you like to um, to share that you've heard? There's three key ones, uh, Bill, mm -hmm. in my time that I see where 90% of the failure for businesses that, that even from some of the pro bono things I do, go to meetings and I'll get a chat with people at church. There'll be people that come and say hello. Uh, what are you doing? Where are you being? Where are you? And the first one is this, and it's so difficult, but probably only 1% of people I've spoken in the last 30 years get this one fact. Even mm. though I'll explain it, even though I'll show them, it's called capitalization. So the purpose of business is to create a value. Like they'll, they understand why they buy a house. What they want is they have to be, they buy a million dollar home, they want to be worth two million in 10 years, right? They understand that. That's capitalization. That is capital growth equity. Sure. In a business, they set their business up with their local accountant under a proportionate structure and they go and buy 100 shares at a buck. Yeah. Mm. So the first thing they've done is set their business up for $100 of capital value worth in the business structure. Mm. That's like putting a palm tree in a pot. And that's it. Mm -hmm. You're never going to get bigger than the pot. So you've got to have a bigger view. For example, capitalization in companies is that the, the, the secret of building the business value is not just all about its revenue and its profits and what your, what your stock is. It's your share price. And what people don't understand that, oh, that's for public listed companies. No. The purpose of the vehicle is to get its value up. So if you, for example, if I said the local businessman, he's got doing two, three million turnover, He's got 10 staff, he's making a good buck, he's driving his nice new Ford truck pickup. You know, we've got his caravan, <laughs> his other little things that he's hooked on right. HP. Yeah. And, you know, he's got a million dollar home with a $700,000 mortgage. Yeah, he's like the richest person in his family and he's thinking and, he's chopped up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and But, money, you, know, you look at your company structure and you've set up a pricing company, which is your holding company, your trading company, your trust, and all wrapped up in one, and you've issued 100 shares of the dollar. Now, why would right. you issue with first start the company, you set up a holding company and you issue 50 million shares. Because at least yep. then you've got a, a ballpark, right? And you issue the shares down, at, get them down at point one. Mm -hmm. And the whole goal then is to get the share yep. price to dollar. You, you've just inserted liquidity and options that you can then right. exercise later in your life with, the, with that structure. Because if I want money, I, I, can go, I can go to a colleague and say, look, I've got a company here that's got 50 million shares, a holding company. I've got three other little divisions underneath <laughs> it that are building. You know, we've got a hamburger business and we've got our French fry business and we've got a Coca-Cola business. It's all yeah. working. I'll give you a percentage of the holding company. I mean, that's not valued now, but, you know, uh, it, you know, if you have a look at the books, what do you say? The peak price range ratio is, is nothing, but I'm going to get this company to a dollar. So I'm going to give you a million shares for 10,000 bucks. Now, or it might be 20. Yeah. Because the anybody multiplication can multiplication factor. Anybody can lose 10 grand, anybody can lose 20 grand and not, you know, of that type of nature and not feel mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So it's not about investing, it's about, and believe me, but I'm looking for somebody who will support me and also add value to the company. 
Right. Now, I, can, I can do that. I can I can open up a company tomorrow at 50 million shares. I can cap that out for 50 k of money. Mm-hmm. And I can go and find 10, 20 colleagues under the law because I'm a sophisticated investor's law and section 21s and all those sort of things. And I can say to them, uh, Chairman, you could be a good fit with me to work with me. I'll put you on my advisory board even, help me build this. Put $20,000 in and I'll, and I'll give you a million shares. Right. Now, so these are people you had a business relationship of some sort in the past. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. it could be friends and family. Yeah. Friends and family. That's right. People who eat. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, you can't go and solicit, but you can talk to people right. in your Within your tight circle. circle. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. And and uh, that's how you can grab a quick two hundred thousand dollars and stick in the cap. Now a two hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars cap, fifty grand of your own money, a quarter mm-hmm. of a million. You can get going your first year and start That's right. Some stuff. It's a great priming of the pump. It's wonderful. I like yeah. this. Yeah. And people go, oh, but I'll be giving some accounting away. Hold on. You've issued you've issued five million shares out of a fifty million dollar company. You've still got mm. full control. You got equity. Plus, you've got these people here who are clamoring. Going, Come on, money. Let's go. Let's the going. That's right. That's right. Now, then you get your business to be actually doing something and and have your team together. So look, okay, if you want to put another twenty in, go for it. And, and you can get that next cap. So capitalization is about, it's not using people, but it's utilizing funds to get what most people are doing, going to the bank and borrowing money, risking their house, mm-hmm. trying to scratch a dollar out of the first couple of years. Give mm-hmm. yourself a chance. Yeah. You know, and, and, and look, you, you give me a quarter of a million dollars in any good concept and idea, you can get three million turnover the first year mm-hmm. and make, yeah. make at least that profit, you know? Right. So, and you diversify um, the focus of any given shareholder if they're going to be com- they're going to be contributing some form of thing, whether it's their personal book of business or their energy or their you know expertise in some area. They they yeah, you yeah. get a multiple set of brains and a few right. few dollars. It's which, perfect. Which to me is the number two is that so they will get your structure right. Mm-hmm. Sit down and look at and ask yourself this question: If I succeed, and I'm a fifty million dollar business in ten years. What would that structure look like? Mm. And go to a professional somehow that knows corporate structure, whether it's a lawyer and accountant, not even not many of them do because they charge you 750 bucks to set up a hundred shares for pricing the company. Yeah, yeah. You've got to get to someone that's been in the corporate world. Mm. Um, and so okay, how does that structure work so I can grow not in a in a in a palm in a, in a pot, but I've got a garden. I've got a garden, I can put more trees in, you know, I can I can develop that without having to rip the palm tree out of the pot. That's the first thing. The second is then those folks that you want to invite, get yourself an advisory board. And what I mean by that, not fellow directors, because they're right. a pain. Uh, they, they control things. They want to tell you what to do. Because uh, you, you don't want to go to your lawyer for advice about building business. You don't want to go to your accountant for advice about building. Now, you need them. I need my books done. Right. I need someone to do the legal contracts. But they're not business people. They're professionals. They're a brain surgeon in a hospital. They're literally going to run a hospital. Mm-hmm. You've got to get a team of people around you that you can sit with and you can get some discernment, some wisdom, some 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 concept to look, I've got this idea, guys. And Johnny, you're an accountant, and Pete, you're a solicitor, and yada, da, 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 and you, you you've been in banking and you you're you've all equity shareholders in this. If I take the decision, we can lose all our money. But if I do, we can do this. What do you reckon? You get that feedback, you can mold that. Because these people have got skin in the game. They're not giving you opinion. They've actually got something to lose with you, but they're also your encourager, not your negative. Right? Yeah, so agreed. That advisory board's very important. Even, even if you're just going to open up a butcher shop, get some advisory people around it. You know, mm-hmm. hey, Nugs understands deploy of product, costings, you know, efficiencies, uh, bulk buying, yep. those type yep. of people on your advisory board. Yep. So you can go to John and say, John, you, you know, you were a butcher shop many years ago. Hey, how did you buy in bulk and say, you know, how could you save 10% on the product right. and uh, get that format? And, and they even um, have the, their personal contacts. They say, well, I used to go through these people. They still know me. And this is about people, not the product. Mm-hmm. It's not about social not media. More. Yeah. It's, it's, it's people. People, yeah. you grow your people, they'll build your business. Mm. People bring innovation. They bring ideas. Everything comes out of the heart of man. And especially if you're going down a place that's never been before, you've got to go. You've got it, it's it, no one's got a crystal ball. Yeah, good point. Yeah. So you you've got to get out of this discernment thing that can't come out of a machine, it can't come out of a product, it comes out of the human spirit. Yeah. And you put a group exactly. of people, you know, that brave heart attitude thing. 
That's what does it. And, yeah. and those people you can trust because when things go a bit wobbly, which they will, because the third point is the three for me, if you're going to get a business, understand you're going to get into the ring and you're going to get hit. You're going to get your nose broken. You're going to lose a few teeth. And it might be round three, you look like you're losing. Just don't quit. Stay mm -hmm. in the game. Because on the 15th round, it could be one punch, just one thing. Right. Bang, you got the title fight. Yep. Yep. The, the it, persistence yeah. of that. But, you know, I'm not saying it has to be the worst thing in your life, but you've got to take a few hits, mate. It's, it's our businesses. Right. Uh, it's not this all this, you know, flowers. Right. But what happens is that it's inside of that, the fourth thing to make those three happen is read. Oh, a, bo a bonus thing. I love this. Read, Let's get a bonus. Read and read. Read, read, and read. Yep. Now, I've read over 500 books because you know what? I was, it just me to me, I was a dummy. I didn't know anything. I didn't have a college degree. So I thought I've got to get information. So I read Mass Thinking Book, you know, anything you get a hold of. And, but I actually took notes out of the book. Mm. Well, that's a great idea. Yeah. And I started an idea. So yeah, me. there's nothing new under the sun. You see, everything we need to know, you can Google a little research it, but books, because with a book is different. You've got to sit down, you've got to think, and your mind's got to work like that. that. And, 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 it, and it helps your brain move. Yeah. You know, it's like exercising your mind. People say, oh, listen to audio. If you listen to something, you pick up 27% retention. If you read it and then write it out, yeah, it's way up there. You're at seventy-two percent application of remembrance in the following cabin. The other thing is when you've written it out on a piece of paper, you have connected it into your world. You've taken it from something and made it yours. Yep. That's, and if you teach it to somebody else, it's really loaded in your brain. Yeah. You know, I love it. There's certain there's certain laws that apply to reading books. You've got the ripple effect. You've got the you know the, 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 these are laws that apply. And there's only four or five. Learn the laws. You'll get them out of the books. You know, right? Yeah, that's that's a law. You know, the, right. the the law of gravity says, I don't care if you believe it or not, it works. Right, right. Every time. So reliably. You know, yeah. <laughs> and there's only there's only certain like you know, save ten percent of everything. Right. Don't spend more than what you process. If you start mm. doing well, don't go and buy yourself a lease car. Pay cash. Uh, don't don't do something for a tax deduction. That's mm. where I've made a lot of mistakes. Mr. Account. Marty, you're making too much money, you gotta get rid of it. What a stupid thing. <laughs> Here's your 30%, pay your 30% corporate tax, keep the other 7%, and that's enough to build your fortune. Mm. You, yeah, oh. This is you're saying things in such a uh, a nice, concise, straightforward way that I you're living my last five years as a coach, mate, is these types of conversations. <laughs> you're giving me flashbacks. All right. So um what what do you other than other than what you shared shared like what are your personal favorite quotes or sayings that you use to kind of get yourself refocused when you're feeling a little foggy? Okay, um, it, it, there's something that I'm, I'm actually in the middle of. I've been asked anyway to write these five books on this very process. I've got okay. done it. I just I'm just not focused at it. I don't like the limelight in a sense, but mm. in, in in this process, yeah, I like to say I stay with the clouds and I know what I'm doing. Uh, yeah. Until it's okay. <laughs> because there's a lot of there's a lot of negative out there that people you know jealousy in this country is quite quite uh, quite effective. <laughs> no. <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, you know, so, Newsflash. Yeah, I, 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 I try to keep under the wind a lot of things, but yeah, that's okay. Perfect. But the, but to answer that question you've seen it is absolute that if for me, it was learning about the aha system, and that's what these books are going to be written on. But it's, it's attitude develops good habits, mm. and those habits determine great actions. Mm. So it's a bit like when you're a kid, you learn to tie your shoelace, and it's very hard when you first start, but mm. when you get it, it's a no-brainer. Right. So most people are spending too much time trying to succeed. It's <laughs> not that difficult. You see, just develops some good habits, they become your friend, and in a day, you'll be doing things in four hours. It takes most people 12. That's right. Yeah. They're struggling because mm -hmm. now habits. So one of the habits that I've established is PPP. Now I did that 30. I'm the advice of someone else. I didn't understand. I read a book called The Success System Never Fails by a guy called Stone. Seven-year-old insurance consultant at age 62, <coughs> the most successful insurance company in America, and he was a billionaire. 
Mm. Oh, that's a bloke I can learn from. What's he say? At the end of the morning, pee, pee, pee. Pee, pee, pee. So somewhere between 5.30 and 7.30 every day, no matter where I am in the world, I do prayer, preparation and planning. Mm. Now, if you're not a prayer, meditate. Right. right. Say some affirmations. Say some good things against your life. Like, you know, it's speak well over you. The first thing in the morning, don't just get out of bed and rush around, get in the car and get to work. Mm. Spend mm. some time on yourself saying, yeah. man, you know, now, see, because your brain doesn't know whether you're lying to it or telling the truth. Right. It's just going to receive what you're saying. Yeah. So Especially habitually. Marty Absolutely. Marty Morris, you're 61. Yeah, wow, man, you're looking better looking today than you ever were. See, now, it's not true. But it doesn't matter. That's what I say because that's what my brain's going to get. What the right. point is, just you know, sure. And then yeah. plan. You know, write down the ten things you're going to achieve for the day on a piece of paper. Have that in front of you. Put it in a card in your pocket so you can break ten o'clock. You, <laughs> well, the meeting's running late. My plane's not there. And hey, what was those ten things? Right, right. And the, you know, planning is okay. Those ten things. <clears throat> okay, number A, eat that frog. It's more important than number C. I'll take that. No, I don't want to do it, but that's one you should do first. Mm. Because you'll procrastinate. You get that out of the way and you go, oh, the other nine's going to be easy. <laughs> yeah. So that's PPP, that that habitual thing. So when I get up in the morning, the first thing I do, I'll not get out of bed with that prayer, of course. I thank the day, I thank the Lord for my day. When I say that, I'm, I am thankful. I'm thankful I'm alive and I've got a day to do something with. And then I want my day, I don't want my day to be rushed. I don't, it's my time. See, you can't buy it back. You can always make money. There's more money in the world than ever, never spend. There's more people. But yet we've got more people getting lonely. How do you get lonely with seven billion people in the world? Six mm. How do you get lonely? Mm. How do you have no money when even as you and I sit right now today, $1.8 trillion is going to go around the world just in family office in one day? Yeah. There's more money floating around. It's these. You know, you've got to give them a slip shrink. You, know? you want to play in the football field, get on the field. Get the habits but, in but place. Yeah. Get your habits, your, your personal habits, that, you know, so that you've got time efficiency. So you, 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 you're you working in the flow. You get in the zone. And then it becomes, it's like these even difficult things become easy because the habit's doing them, not you having to think about it and strive. Great. And I, I think today... Uh, because of the internet, people using their laptops. They don't, I've used one of these systems for, for 35 years as an executive process. It's still all manual. Sure, I've got sure. computers and dials. Sure. But in here, there's my list of things I'm doing today. It's only right. five. When I go to bed tonight, they'll be ticked off. But I don't get the yeah. whole 10 done. They go to tomorrow, and I say forget it. Right. I'm done Good. with it. So, um, but it surprised me if I go around, like, you know, I'm, uh, even with good efficient executives, you know, PhD doctors, permanent head damage in some cases, but, you know, that's not a story. Um, you know, give me a list of things to do today. Well, I'm doing this, this, and this. I'm busy. I'm up. Just show me the list. Right. I See how controlled you are each day. You know, you go to the desk and it's messy. Yeah. Mm. Well, it's everything. Mm. You know, what? Well, you come to a messy desk and a messy mind. <laughs> Yeah, true. I like it. So, yeah, uh, simple things. The point is, people trying too hard to be smart. You don't need to be smart to be an entrepreneur and be good at business. You need to be smart to get a university degree to become a doctor. Mm, mm. Right? Smart people don't run hospitals. Smart people are the brain surgeons. Right. The people who run hospitals are good at efficiency systems. Systems run things, and people with habits help systems run things efficiently. Right. Yeah, that's the secret. Perfect. McDonald's, you know, and take the McDonald's, a big efficiency system, it runs yeah. like a clockwork. So, um, yeah, people think, Oh, well, if I was smart, I'm telling you, to this dumb kid here, I learned and I've met a lot of dumb other billionaires. You know, the biggest lesson I got, I went to America in my pinstripe suit with my red bow tie, Porsche motor car, doing well, met this businessman, and uh, he, he asked me to come home from the seminar and speak to me about money and financial issues. Anyway, I had an hour's conversation. He said, you know, Marty, he said, uh, what I do is not sexy, what I do is not smart, but, you know, I'm in the toilet paper business, 
and every day somebody uses my product. Mm -hmm. he said, and they will smart. tomorrow, <laughs> and they will the next day. <laughs> he said, "You, you've got to stay on top of legislation. You got to, you got to be really smart to do what you're doing. Mm. You know, you got to, you got to have all these books, and you got to know legislations." And he said, "Mate, I just know I've got to have systems running efficiently in my business that it gets the toilet paper made, it gets it shipped to the house." And the product is getting used, and then I've just got to ensure that the people that are managing those systems, I look after them. Yeah. And he said, he said, go home and learn how to build a business not out of your smart, but out of systems. And when, from that meeting, I went home. And three years later, we went from a thousand clients to sixteen thousand to a hundred million dollar business. Nice. And I turned it. I turned it away from me. In other words, it's not about me. Right. It's about, it's not about your smarts. It's about the system. Right. I love it. Yeah, so you'll get, you'll get you'll get smart anyway. When I say smart, because when you hit a hammer and a nail, you know, for ten years solid, you get smart at building. Right? Yeah, yeah, good point. Yeah, it's not like you won't learn. It's just that you stay. Everything you do learn will be end up being um, actionable and put you in a direction that pulls you forward instead of learning the bad habits because you don't actually take control of your habits like you do every day. Hey, hey, hey. So, hmm. um, bad habits kind of. They're, they're, they're thinking, they just see most people aren't, their, their, their emotions are thinking for them, their feelings are thinking for them, not the discipline and focus of the objectives to make that trained brain get into the zone, you see? Yeah, so could not agree more with that. I, I like that. If we were, I'm, we're going to be wrapping up real soon here, Martin, but if you, if my, my fun question that I usually ask people is, if you were talking to your 18-year-old self, what would you say to your 18-year-old Martin? Okay. First thing is set up a, 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 a bank account and put 10% of every single dollar you put in and don't touch it. Get that discipline. Okay. That discipline and build your own bank. Because if an 18 year old, by the time he's 30, does that, when he wants to buy a car, he can loan the money from his own bank, which is his mm. bank of money. Mm -hmm. You can actually call it that. And pay that bank the interest on the car mm -hmm. loan that he was going to mm -hmm. do from his process. So he's internalizing a state wealth growth. Yeah, love it. Yeah. An eight-year-old does that and just learns some basics of getting their first property, some basics. By the time they're 30, they'll be in a very, very close position that that estate that they build out of those savings will replace their income they have to earn for time for dollars the rest of their life. Yeah, love it. So point number two, Mr. Eight-year-old, Marty, by 30, if you can become a free man, you can do whatever you want to do with the rest of your life because you won't be working as a slave for other people's money. Mm. You want to be just an artist that doesn't even ever make a dollar. You don't know. Right. Because your lousy mm -hmm. pay packet, you go and put 40 hours a week into, mm -hmm. right? Tax man's grabbing, you know, whatever. So get free. Yeah, love so it. So get free. And the third, write down 10 things in your pattern that, that that you'd like to to achieve in the next 10 20 years like a little bucket list but don't don't make it complex okay number one i'd like to be married and have a great family fantastic write that down mm. number two you know I, I, whatever those things are there'll be a couple of that are deep in your heart you've got to go and sit on a palm tree and ask this question to answer the question and that is if i was a magic genie right now but i give you three wishes you want to eat you want what would those three things be? Right. And if you can have the courage to write that down and put it on a piece of paper. And the next question is, why haven't you got them now? And what are you doing to get them? Mm. Okay. With no excuses. Because the magic genie is no excuses, see? Right. None. Yeah. So. Uh, Love it. It's so an 18-year-old Marty it. hearing that, I, uh, I wonder what, uh, what today's Marty would look like if he heard that back then. That's kind of cool. Something to think about. <laughs> I, I, I would have, I would have no doubt. Uh, I would have achieved probably 10, 15, 20 times more with the, with less effort. Yeah. And, and uh, the savings contents, particularly because I kept them, had to make more money to have more things. Mm. But you can make less and have more. Mm -hmm. it, I know it's a contradiction, but when you do the maths and I show people, you know, uh, just what what the compound interest, the law of 72 and finances, what Buffett's theory about his whole career is based on the law of 72 yeah. and the compound interest. 
Yeah, a little bit of patience and yeah, consistency. Ten years. Yeah. 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 Once, once you got your seed, once you got that seed in ten years, you might doubles every ten years on a law of seventy two. So you're not doing it. You might even double every ten years anyway. Right. So if you get yourself a million dollars, end of story. Yeah, uh, good point. The time is gonna money. right. That time's gonna elapse anyway. You might as well make the most of it. I love it. You don't have um, a life. You only <laughs> got one. Right. The the working part, the job part, the oh, I'm a doctor, well, I'm this, or I'm this, or I'm a businessman. That's what you do. It's not who you are. Right. Your life is about who you are and what the wonderful experiences and the adventures and the, the processes. And dare to dream about all that, you know? Right. If, if you like Italy, dare, dare to dream about having a little place in Italy. You know, you can go and spend three months a year and have a sabbatical and write a book and put some fake hair on your chest and put a tin in the tail <laughs> and come back to Australia, and put your pinstripe suit back on and go back into the banking world, you know? Like just there. Right. Have a look. Because at 61 for me, I look back and I've got a lot of colleagues now, and all they're saying is, and they've got some fairly, you know, you come around Sanctuary Co., there's some fairly serious money around there. Sure, sure. But you go and sit with them in the sauna like I've done, and they're 71, and they're full of regret. Yeah. Regret about not spending time with their family, regret not having, you know, time out when they should have, having sabbaticals. It was all about the money and the business. And it doesn't kiss your backside at the end of the time. It doesn't say thank you. It's mm. gone. Mm. Good point. Right. Love it. So, yeah, that mm. that uh, that's probably the three things, Bill. If I could be of that, those simple things, if they stuck to those habits, because everything, Madam Butterfly, the law of attraction will come to those people because they're in a position they can do something. Mm. People say to me, "Well, I say that. What do I do? Where do I invest it? Don't worry about that." Just get it, because what happens, circumstances and opportunities are going to come your way to maximise that, because right. you've been in the Yeah. Wow, that's a good one to end on. Um, I think I think that it, people are going to have to listen to this interview at least three to four times to get one half yeah. of the stuff that's in it. So, And I hope they do. I hope listeners and watchers uh, go ahead and re, you know, uh, rewatch this thing and take notes and uh, use those notes and use the listing process that Martin was just mentioning. And uh, by all means, buy his next books once they once they come out. And what was the book you mentioned earlier from a while back? Oh, there's a there's a book called The uh, Fifty Unsung Business Heroes. Uh, which you can get on Amazon. Right. Uh, I've got a video on YouTube that has a little bit of story about that. But in there is fifty business people in Australia. That most people don't know about that have got their stories, Great. Uh, you know, written. Wonderful book. Not just because I'm one of those, but I mm. I mm. did that book because I wanted people to pick up a book and get 50 different stories of real life stories of success. People in Australia that come from zero to overcoming build businesses, you know, and that they wouldn't yeah. know them because they're not media hyping people. They're just yeah. quite family, you know, good old Aussie guys. When I say Aussie guys, I, you know, there's some Egyptian guys that moved here and some African people moved here and Italians. Uh, that's Australia. But their success sure. stories just so inspired me. And uh, I thought, yeah. wow, this country is – everybody can have a go here and make it if they and want that, to. That's worthy of sharing. And, um, and you know, if they're in a big collection of 50 in one book, I you know, I'm saying to whoever's watching this, go grab that book and read it. And um, I'll say right now, thank you for your time, Martin. We're going to wrap up now. Hopefully, we'll have a, a chat at some other point in the future. But thanks again. And, and um, you know, you're, good luck with Sea Sky. The, the audience yeah. that watches this isn't necessarily um, uh, at the level that Sea Sky would be, would be interfacing with. But, you know, uh, let's hope some of them get up to that level and they can go and shake hands with you at some point in the future. So thanks again, Martin, for your time. Thanks, Bill. Have a wonderful day. Stay looking up and forward in all things and ant right the real life. <laughs> it Cheers. is. Thanks. Thanks, buddy.